Hey folks, we're out here doing more trap checking, trap setting. And like we said, if this whole series gets 100,000 views, anyone who has left a comment and is a subscriber to our channel is going to be in the drawing for a beautiful beaver pelt out of Randy Newberg's own supply of canned beaver pelts. Come on along, we got a lot of trapping to do. Well, Dale, we've uh, done the show you how to trap them. Yep. And then we went out and checked some traps right. and we caught some. Yeah. Now you got to take this beautiful hide, mm -hmm. get it off this carcass, get it on a stretcher, and get it ready to go to a tannery or if you were going to sell them, these ones where you're going to take and do whatever you want to do with them. I'm just going to walk through it and I'm going to have you do one at the same time. Okay so that you get the feel for it. And just note that if you had 10 trappers here explaining their procedure of how they skin a muskrat, you're probably gonna get 12 different ideas. Right. So we all end up at the same place, but everybody's got different steps in the process of how they do it or how they go along the way. So when you first start doing it, you're trying to hold everything. And then after you've been doing it for a while, you realize that there's a joint right there where there's a little bit of a, of a crease. Right. And you just get your knife in there. Working this hairline I was telling you about. Yeah. Right here, you see that it's now starting to open up there. Right. Yeah. And the reason I lay them on their side like this is it gives me a, a really good uh, angle to yeah. follow that hairline. Gotcha. You wanna go right up oh. there. Okay right to the base of the tail. So, there you go. Okay. Now you flip him. Go the other Same way. thing that way. Okay. So what you want to do here, you kind of got where these two pieces meet. Uh -huh. So take your knife, get it detached from the tail. There you go. Okay. So now uh, you want to hold on to this and just skin a little bit, just like you're, you know, when you're doing a deer or right. elk. But just know this is paper thin. Do the same thing on that part of the tail that you did on the on the front side. Use your hands to pull the pin okay. so you can just separate it a little bit there. Gotcha. And yeah, you can see with the muskrat, it pulls really easy. You're already far enough this way. Go ahead and flip, flip him. Flip him, and you might want to use your knife and just cut that tab a little bit and get him started this way. All right. And in quick order, you'll have him just like this. Gotcha. Okay. Sometimes I prefer to not use a super sharp knife right. on muskrats because they're, they are so thin uh -huh. that you can put a pretty decent hole in them if you're cutting. Then you're, you're gonna try, just use your thumb. To kind of get around that. Get around that. And, right and you'll have to use your, your knife, knife to, to get it right, like that little, that little strip right there. Okay. Just put your blade through there right. and it'll, Come really quickly. There you go. This dude is super fat. He's been down at, <laughs> at, at the donut shop too much. So this is where you want to be careful. You don't want to cut this stomach right. lining. Okay. So what you'll want to do is just take your knife there real quick. And so once you start pulling them and you get them up around like past the hips here right. in mm -hmm. the back, you're going to be able to pull everything other than the stomach. Okay. So right now, you want to be careful where you're at because you've, you've got some of this uh, muscle right here that's kind of starting attached. to tail, so there's the tear. So just do a couple quick strokes parallel to the hide. Gotcha. Okay. So, and then once you get past the stomach, you're in really good shape then. I'm just pulling mine. I always start with the back first. Pull the back up as far as you can pull it, uh -huh. just like you did there and then roll it to the side. And normally, and uh, people who've done a lot of rats, they're just gonna pull. Now, put your hand up here more. Okay. And the otherwise, you run the risk of pulling them in half. Yeah, see how that's just mm -hmm. slowly coming forward? So, you see how I'm about just to the bottom of his ribs? Uh -huh. I've got the front legs pretty much right there. Right. So, I take my thumb and I just oh. work it in there. Okay. 
and pull that leg through. And then you just go like this. You don't even need to cut it. So now I usually take a different knife than my really sharp knife. And so you got a whole lot of gristle right here along the cheeks. Okay. So you pull it forward as far as you can. And you use your knife to push all that gristle back. Right here, what you see is a connection. That's an ear right there. So you go right as close to the base of the skull as you can. And there's the ear gotcha. right there. Yep. And then you go over into the other ear. Then when you get to this point, the next thing you're gonna run into are the eye sockets. Yeah. So if you just start cutting here, you're gonna cut it so that you don't have anything to put it on the stretch, any remaining skin to put on the stretcher. Okay. So you see that eye right there? Yep. And right below the eye is the cheek. I just squeeze it with my hand and that puts enough pressure on the okay. hide to allow it to roll forward. This is always where you dull your knife. You see how I, now I've pulled him right down to the end of his nose here? Mm -hmm. So then you just, you're touching a lot of bone here anytime you're, kind of like when you're doing the caping on a deer or right. an elk, right? The head is all bone. Yep. So I'm just, every time I'm just squeezing it, and as I squeeze it, it's enough pressure from just the squeeze okay. to roll it forward. And then I always try to get the bottom taken care of first. So now all it is is we've just got the nose right there. Mm -hmm. So get your thumb under there, give it one little roll of your hand, and it gets right down to the end of the nose. And you take one cut probably on that side, one cut over on this side. It's done. And you're done. Use this knife if you want to to push all that like I'm there. You got it. That's it. So you see how fat yours is compared to mine? Yeah. And yours will end up being a lot bigger also when okay. I put them on the stretcher. So this is kind of how he's gonna go on the on the stretcher like this. So mm -hmm. they call this the saddle right here. This is a, a bunch of meat you try to get off. Okay. And then usually down here by the hind legs is where the fat and other stuff can really accumulate yeah, like it has on yours. Yeah. Whereas this one, it really hasn't. So oh. you just take this, it's, it's dull, you know, it's mostly for applying pressure. And you see these pieces of flesh, they just come right off. Gotcha. So you're not trying to get it right down to nothing. Uh -huh. You're just trying to get the bigger chunks because on a muskrat, you can overflesh. Gotcha. So, and then down here you get fat. You want to get rid of that. This side right here, I left a little more on than I did on the other side. So right there, get that big chunk of meat off there. Now yours is going to be a little bit more of a project. <laughs> right. You're, you're on the back of him right now, so where most of your fleshing is going to be on the back, kind of like on the top of yeah, their hips. really fat. Right there. So those are the two places you focus on the back. And then on the front, you focus right here yep. and right down here. Okay. And when they're this fat, you also give it a good scrape on, on the side. Inside. And a lot of times it's easier to Just lift it and, and spin the pelt rather than to try spin the board around. Gotcha. Okay. So. How's that looking? That'll looking pretty darn good, Dale. Okay. Now grab a stretcher. I mean, look at how much fat you got off yeah. one muskrat. <laughs> there you go. And then just put that right there where its nose is, right? Yeah. So here's your front leg, here's your front right. leg. Now yep. you want to make it oh. symmetrical more. So okay. this one, you want to turn him a little more. Okay. So right there, pin him down and just and don't, don't, yeah, don't pull it super, super hard. Now slide this down. Yeah. You get that to hang in some meat or flesh. Ooh, be careful. You're about ready to tear that. So it's slide this back right up. So put that leather through that middle right there. Kind of like that. Yeah. Make sure it's through there and then slide the, there you go. That's enough. Perfect. So now, if you're sending these to a fur market, mm -hmm. some people will say, well, I want them to be a little longer on the sides. 
Okay. So, because cool. when they dry, what can happen is they shrink up. Right. So some people will go like this. Oh, to make sure that they stay longer. Yeah, because that's what you get measured for. Right. I don't worry about that because I know for the, oh, you see what happened here? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so here's another trick. Take a nail mm -hmm. and you put it right through. Huh. Gotcha. And okay. then they can't. Can't move on you. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good for your first muskrat, Dale. <laughs> Thanks. When it dries, mm -hmm. what a fur buyer would look at is right back here. He's going to see how much fur there is right under here. This is going to tell him what the quality of the fur is. He's going to grab it and he's going to go and blow and see. Huh. Because that will tell him, like he would look at this and be like, whoa, that's a great February muskrat. Muskrats have their most prime fur, prime meaning what quality it is, mm -hmm. uh, in February and March. Gotcha. So once that you've got this all done and you want to send right. it somewhere to get tanned oh. and then turned into a garment. Right. You're going to want to talk to, a, they call them a furrier, okay. uh, who does this as their thing. Don't send it to the, oh, you know, so-and-so told me their cousin's brother's, you know, <laughs> right. janitor does it or yeah. whatever. Uh, there's good furriers all over the country. But just make sure that they specialize in making garments from the, the wild fur. Okay. Now, if you're going to sell them, uh, you know, there, there's the old country fur buyer who comes around. Uh, but there, now most people will sell them at a fur auction. Well, now you brought up like the local fur buyer. Mm -hmm. How would you go about getting connected with the local fur buyer if you didn't have an au uh, the accessibility to go right. to an auction or something right. like that? Every trappers, every state has a trappers association. Okay. Like I'm a life member of the Montana Trappers Association. Gotcha. So I get a newsletter. I know that over in Livingston, Montana, there's a fur auction in certain periods of time, Anaconda, Deer Lodge. Okay. So in your state, there's probably a fur auction going somewhere. Mm -hmm. If not, those association members, all of them know who the fur buyers are. I got you, and okay. Fur buyers will usually say, we're gonna be in this town, at this gas station at this day. Right. And they're there for an hour and you bring all your fur, <laughs> you know, make sure it's taken care of properly. And they grade it and size it and say, Here's what we're paying. And you either say, give me the money or sorry, I'll go to the next guy. Yeah. So, okay. But since we're doing this for garments, right. uh, any furrier you send it to, once these are dried, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll get them tanned how they like it. Right. So they have tanneries they work with if they don't have their own tannery. And then they'll start making pieces out of it. Nice. So. Well, it's cool to learn. I mean, and, and I'm excited to, to hopefully catch some more and yeah. do, do this more. Well, that's it. Pretty easy, Dale. Yeah. Uh, anyone who wants to get into trapping, muskrats are what I call the gateway to, to doing it. If you got any questions, leave them down below. Uh, we try to do more things that are trapping related because we get a lot of demand for it, a lot of questions. So if you got questions, ask them and we'll do our best to do some content that can answer them. Thanks for watching.